This story doesn't bring me any joy to report on, but there's a big lesson here to be learned about safety. When a puppy dies at daycare, it's a big deal. I've been conducting play groups for dogs of all sizes, all ages, all breeds for over 20 years. I've done over 18,000 play groups with dogs in various environments, backyards, my training facility, you name it. And I've never had an injury or a dog fight. And the reason why is because I referee, I shape dog play, and I take special consideration if dogs have a size and weight differential. When trainers do this, they are going to prevent a lot of stress and potential injuries, and yes, maybe even death, as you're gonna see in this story. The dog that died was named Olive. She was a mini Dachshund, and she was a puppy. Olive was 3.5 pounds, incredibly small. Olive was taken to the Prime Paw Puppy School, which is located in the San Francisco SPCA for a socialization class. She was playing with a Bernie Doodle, which is a cross between a Bernie's Mountain Dog and a Poodle, and that dog was reported to be about 20 to 25 pounds. So keep that in mind. One dog was 20 to 25 pounds, the other dog was three and a half pounds. That's a significant weight and strength differential. The reason why I referee dog play in a tactile manner, especially when there are size and weight differentials, is because dogs move quickly and it only takes a second for a paw or a tooth or a dog to be flipped over or trampled and they could be severely injured. So I don't want to hear any nonsense from people about how I don't let dogs play and I play too close or I disengage them too much. The reason why I do that is because I understand what ritualized aggression is. It's like contact sports and it's my job and it's your job to learn how to referee dog play so it's safe. When you can let it go and have extended play without too much interruption and too much disengagement, it's really obvious. When it's not, it's really obvious. And those who don't know should figure that out. We'll have a video link at the end of this video and you can go learn how to referee and shape dog play. When Olive and this larger dog were playing together, they were being watched by a trainer. However, they took their eye off the play for just a second, they said, and then the tragedy happened. This is why I tell my assistants and myself, maintain the practice of keeping your eye on the play at all times. And if you have to take your eye off the play, put the dog in a pen or let me know or separate the dogs in some manner so that the concern of the weight and size differential will be no more. Olive's guardian is incredibly upset and distraught as one can imagine. Just think, you drop your dog off at daycare and you get a call saying that they're dead because they were crushed or trampled by a larger dog? It belies logic, to be quite honest, if you consider yourself a professional with any kind of substantial experience in dog play groups. Again, this is why I referee, I shape, and I do tactile refereeing when it is applicable, especially if there is a size and weight differential. From what I can gather in the news stories, the San Francisco SPCA Prime Paw Puppy School hasn't really offered much in the way of any kind of compensation. Um, that's pretty egregious in and of itself. Um, personally, if that had happened on my watch, I would probably retire as a dog trainer. I would not want to continue. I would be devastated if something like that happened. I take great pains in my personal life to practice one simple mantra, safety is my religion. When people in class or people online have commented, oh, you play too close, you disengage them too much, let them play. What I tell them is I'll let the dogs play when we get the data that allows us to let them just play. And many times that happens. But when there is a size and a weight differential, when there is a strength differential, when one dog is a little bit more gregarious than the other, but the other dog is still interested in play, you need to shape that play. Dogs move seven to 10 times faster than human beings. They can land 25 bites in four seconds. Dogs are quick. And when you're in play and it's at its height and dogs are chasing and nipping and running and chasing and nipping and running and doing all these things, that's known as ritualized aggression. So just like basketball or football or hockey, there's a referee watching the play and making sure everything goes the way it should. And that's what humans need to do to avoid problems, even bare minimum to avoid stress. Many dogs get stressed in play because nobody is helping that dog figure it out. It's too much for them. They're interested, but the other dog or the number of dogs is too much. And what happens is that dog gets stressed and they either tap out or they start to snap at the other dogs. And that is not how dogs learn. 
That's how dogs learn to be afraid of other dogs and make a general association that dog play and dog socialization is scary. I have thousands upon thousands of videos of dogs who started out scared or shy and were counter conditioned and we shaped the play and then they did better. That's how you do it. At the end of this video, we'll give you a link so you can go and implement safe play practices for you and your dogs. I wanna extend my condolences to Olive's guardian. I can't even imagine the pain and frustration that you must be going through. I'm really sorry this happened to you. Know that not all play groups are like this, and if you do happen to get another dog, I'm sure you'll be a lot more diligent in how you proceed with socialization, as well you should be. And as far as the Prime Paw Puppy School, you people need to figure out how to handle your dogs in the right way. I don't care how many dogs you're working with, all it takes is one incident like this to give you a bad reputation. And to be quite honest, from what I could gather in the news, you don't seem to be all that concerned or sorry about it, which is a shame, a downright shame. Okay, so here's how you get dog play shaped and refereed. Number one, take in consideration size and weight differentials, as well as a dog's interest in play or a dog's lack of interest in play. Number two, make sure you're shaping and refereeing the play with disengagement by using leave it and touch and verbal prompting. Asking for the cue, prompting with the sounds, and then marking yes and paying the dog when they disengage. If they don't disengage from a prompt or a cue, you time them out. So the flow chart is come out of play and get paid and get back into play. Don't come out of play, you get timed out. It's very simple. Number three, make sure your eye is on the game the entire time. That means you don't take your eye off the play. And either you're shaping with verbal prompts and cues, or you are implementing tactile refereeing where you're using your hands in between the dogs to mitigate weight and size differentials. Number four, assess the dogs. Make sure you know who the team is. Make sure you know who your players are. Make sure you've done an accurate assessment of the dogs you're gonna have in play. This is crucial. This is tantamount to knowing who's gonna be on your team for waiters and waitresses at a restaurant. This is the same as putting together a sales force. You, you, you would do the same thing for a human team that was going to interact. Do the same thing for dogs and make sure you're not just taking the dogs in to get the money. Build your play groups so that they're safe they're fun, and if some of the dogs are challenging, bare minimum, no bite history. They cannot be dogs who are too big for the other dogs to handle. I work with 400 dogs a year. I do probably, I don't know, four play groups a week, from puppies to adults to adolescents. And the reason why we don't have any problems is because we take all of these measures. We do all of this stuff. We shape dogs the play. We put together the dogs based on their play style and also their weight and size differential. If you do these things, you're gonna have a lot less chance of something going wrong. Filming. Don't forget to film your dog training sessions and your dog training classes. It's as simple as having a camera on a tripod. You can use a GoPro. You can use anything as long as it is capturing the environment the people and the dogs. Those are the aspects you need to have a recording of. Hey, if nothing happens, you can erase the film. But if something happens or you're interested in evaluating what went on, this is going to be a crucial aspect of you succeeding as a dog trainer is to film. I have been encouraging dog trainers to film their dog training sessions and classes for years. Hopefully most of you are doing this. When it's on film, you have the answer. I myself, go a little crazy. I do a three camera shoot at every class, a two camera shoot at sessions, so I have all the angles covered. I wear a GoPro on my chest, I have a GoPro on the wall, and I have a large camera in the corner on a tripod capturing all of the action. This has been invaluable for me to evaluate play, to evaluate training, not only my own but my clients, and also to capture the dog behavior in the environment it occurred in. Film, it's going to be an incredible way for you to get better, to know what's going on, and you'll have a pure and exact document to explain to your clients exactly what happened, and you can even play it for them and debrief when you do a session. With the amount of nonsense I see that people film, it would behoove you to film your dog training. You don't have to post it, you can archive it, but film. It is crucial. In this case, I really hope that Prime Paw Puppy School has a video of what transpired so that Olive's guardian can have that and proceed with some legal action. 
Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I want to extend my condolences to little Olive and her family. It's a huge tragedy that this happened, and I really feel bad about it. I, I can't believe that this is even a story in the news. So again, prayers, strength to you folks. If you want to figure out how to shape and referee play and do it safely, check out these videos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and pass this information on to somebody who might need it.